Uh, over the earlier part of the fall, we had a lot of improvements in the drought situation statewide. Uh, we had some really nice rains uh, in September and early October. Uh, that actually was a problem for harvest, where harvest started out really slow for corn and soybeans. Um, since then, since about October 14th or so, it's really dried out um, all across the eastern part of the state. Uh, and up here, you know, uh, in the last month, we've maybe had, um, you know, 10, 20 percent of average rainfall in the last last month or so. So we're starting to see drought conditions kind of creep back in the region. Um, I'd say maybe we're in a pre-drought situation. Um, one thing about this time of year is that it's the driest time of year, climatologically speaking, historically. Uh, so we can still have a drought in this time, but there's not usually much impact. And some farmers might say if there's ever a time to have a drought, it's probably right now, <laughs> not during the growing season or the spring or some other time. Uh, so there was some benefit to the recent dryness and warm and windy weather. We've had a lot of wind this fall, um, which has dried out the grain in the field a little bit more. Um, but I know a lot of that, the corn was taken out a little wetter than people liked. Um, but you know, you gotta take the opportunities as you can get them to harvest. And uh, hopefully, you know, um, we can see some good timely rains in the spring. So one of the things now too is uh, when we're so dry in the fall, uh, we don't really carry over a lot of soil moisture to start the spring crop season. And so that's the concern right now, since our soils aren't frozen yet, that the moisture is evaporating away and with the warm and windy weather that we've seen. So a couple things uh, right now on the cropping side, there's not too much to worry about. Um, the one crop that's maybe a concern is winter wheat. Um, statewide, I think over 40% of winter wheat was rated poor to very poor um, over the last uh, few weeks. And that's a, a pretty high percentage. I think a lot of that is due to the dry conditions we've seen. Um, and part of it was due to earlier during planting where it was really kind of hit or miss with some of the rain we had. Um, on the livestock or animal side, it's more of looking ahead. Uh, looking ahead towards a colder than average winter, which is more likely at this point, um, you know, I think we're going to see some increased need for feed to carry those cattle through those cold periods. Um, you know, making sure that shelter is available and, you know, anything that those producers need in a colder than usual winter. We haven't seen a really cold winter in a few years. Uh, 2013 to 14 was the last winter up here where we had really cold temperatures. If folks might remember, we had very deep frost, six, eight feet in many areas. And so hopefully we don't have that tough of a situation. Um, but again, I, I think the livestock uh, producers, ranchers um, might have a little more to worry about in the winter ahead.